Hello and you are very welcome back to Film Resolved, the channel where you can learn filmmaking techniques and how to pull them all together in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Lee Dalton and today I'm going to be showing you how to access Gen 5 Color Science on your Blackmagic Design camera. Now I'm using the Pocket 6K but you can use any Blackmagic camera that shoots B-RAW. In fact, I've seen videos and forums showing that you can use the Cinema DNG RAW files from the older Blackmagic cameras, such as the original Pocket Cinema camera. Because that's the flexibility of RAW. A really generous manufacturer plus debaying in post equals color science gains. The only other thing you will need, however, is Resolve Beta 16.3.2 or above. I'm personally running the latest version of the public beta of Resolve 17. If you're already using Gen 5 Color Science, do let me know in the comments how you're finding it so far. I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. However, there is major elephants in the room that they didn't address and it's a little disappointing. But I'm being really picky. It, it still is a step in the right direction. It is important to note that everything is not all sunshine and rainbows with Gen 5 just yet, which we will get into in the tutorial. As always, you can support your channel and give back a little by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And be sure to check the timestamps and see if there's any sections you're already comfortable with, skip them and save yourself some time. But with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So of course, the first thing you're going to want to do here is to import some B-RAW clips and add them to your timeline. And we'll just pretend that this is the greatest edit ever made. And to access Gen 5 Color Science, we want to play with our camera raw settings. So that means we need to come first to our color page. And if we come to this bottom left window here, we see we have many options and the far left one is camera raw. So we'll open up that. And now we have our camera raw window, which DaVinci Resolve is smart enough to recognize we are working with black magic raw clips. And by default, if I just toggle through my footage here, you can see that the decode using is set by default if you've changed nothing under the hood to project. Um, but we want to st uh, start by showing how to do this on a clipped clip basis should you need to be doing that and then afterwards we'll show how to do it on a project basis. So we will switch decode using to clip and that allows us to uh, do the camera raw settings on this clip without affecting the other clips. Now before a compatible version of DaVinci Resolve the color science would have been grayed out and the option would have been just, you know, what your camera knows. So in my case, it would have been grayed out as Gen 4 because that's what my Pocket 6K knows in camera. But now that Gen 5 is out and we're on a compatible version of Resolve, we can toggle this open and we have the access to Gen 5 and we can simply switch over to it. And that's all there is to it as long as you have compatible versions of everything. So basically in short, They've overhauled the gamma and I much prefer it. There's much nicer roll off through the skin tones. And then on the color side of things, it definitely leaves a little to be desired. They didn't address the major elephants in the room, only the minor baby elephants in the room. But like I said, it's definitely a big step in the right direction. So let's switch this back to project. And we know for sure that all these clips, we want to switch them all to Gen 5. So how do we save some time and do this on a project basis? Step one will be to make sure that your clip is decode using project. And like I said, by default, they should all be set to that anyways. And if they aren't, you can always switch them over in a moment. So to set up the project level of camera raw settings, we will come to the bottom right and open our project settings by clicking on the gear cog icon. And we can just come down to the camera raw option here. Now we will obviously switch over to our camera raw, which is Blackmagic raw and decode quality, whatever it is that your system can handle, I'll leave on full res. So decode using is by default set to camera metadata, which just means that however it was shot in camera is how it will be. And because our camera only knows Gen 4, it's color science is set to Gen 4. So we want to switch this to project so that we can access these settings here, which means we can manipulate it ourselves. So for color science, we will switch from camera metadata to Gen 5. And that's all we need to do. Obviously, you could go making other changes that you need, but for accessing Gen 5, that's all there is to it. And now keep your eye on the color science uh, option over here as I hit save, and it just updates automatically. So it's grayed out still, 
because we can't change those because we're decoded using the project settings. But we are now on Gen 5. And if I toggle through our clips, we can see they've all switched over to Gen 5. One other thing I've found handy to have in the back pocket is a power grade that's just simply set up to switch you over to Gen 5 color science. So if I open up my gallery here, I have a simple power grade that I made up that if I apply that, you'll see that it switches us over to clip. It has Gen 5 color science enabled. And in my case, I have highlight recovery turned on by default with that power grade. And Basically with highlight recovery, if there's no clipped highlights, it won't do anything. So there's no loss there. But in a clip, say for example, like this, where there is clipped highlights, if you keep an eye on the highlights here, if I switch this over to our power grade with highlight recovery turned on, you can see that looks a hell of a lot better. And that's just my experience with highlight recovery. In situations where there is something to be recovered, it nearly always looks better and does a lot of work for me that I would have to do myself. So that's just my personal preference with this power grade to have had that enabled as well. But the short of it is, it saves you a few clicks rather than do, if you are doing things on a clip by clip basis and not a project basis, a simple power grade like that in the back pocket is very handy to have. Now, I'm not gonna bullshit you and pretend that there's some secret sauce involved in that power grade. It's a very simple thing and there's obviously nothing to stop you from just taking a couple of minutes to set that up yourself. But if you do want to support the channel, I have finally launched a website and I have a teeny tiny store on there with one item on it and it is this power grade. So if it's applicable to you and you want to support the channel, it's only one euro and you can get that over on the website and I'll leave a link in the description to that. As I mentioned in the intro, not everything is as cracked up as it's made out to be necessarily with Gen 5 color science depending on your workflow. And one good example of that right now is the color space transform workflow. And that's a very common workflow for working with log footage. So I thought I'd cover it real quick. You can see this clip is on Gen 5 color science. So if I grab our color space transform and add it to our node and start tweaking our settings, we can see very quickly that we don't have access to Gen 5 on both the color space and we don't even have access to a 6K specific Gen 4 as well as in our input gamma we do have a 6k version of the film but it's also limited to gen 4 there is no gen 5 input just yet i'm sure that will change very soon hopefully that's something they address by the time the non-beta version the fully working version of 17 gets released hopefully that is resolved <laughs> sorry but anyway uh the short answer is it's not quite there yet it's still in beta it's not fully integrated so while there is many pros to gen 5 there's also some cons so it's up to you to weigh those up and see what road you want to go down Another reason you might want to hold off on switching to Gen 5 for now is because if you've invested in LUTs for your given camera, they would have been based on that camera's original in-camera color science and not Gen 5. So it's definitely worth keeping that in mind too. But that's all we have for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered? Let me know in the comments so I can cover it in the future. My name is Lee Dalton. This is Film Resolved. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,